The issue of education is a very significant issue all across America, but right here in Virginia. In fact, FRC Action invited the two gubernatorial candidates for Virginia to come and share with you their vision for Virginia. Because Virginia is not just an important state in its own right, although I like Virginia, that's good, but it's an off-year election. And all of America is watching what happens here in Virginia. And so we invited the two candidates for governor to come and speak to you. And I have news for you, good news and bad news, or maybe it's good news and good news, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, only one of the candidates wanted to talk with you. Our next speaker is the Republican candidate for governor in the state of Virginia. He is a homegrown Virginian who grew up in Richmond and Virginia Beach. He has an engineering degree from Rice University and an MBA from Harvard Business School. He went from his first job of washing dishes and frying eggs at a local diner to having over 30 years of successful real world business experience. He has been married for 26 years to his wife, Suzanne, and is a dedicated father of four children. He and his family have been and continue to be guided by their faith. He serves as a warden at the Holy Trinity Church in Northern Virginia and is a member of the Business Council and the American Enterprise Institute's National Council. He has served on uh, boards for many nonprofits, uh, he, including the Museum of the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming Glenn Youngkin. Stars and stripes. Thank you. I love it. I love it. How much fun is this? I mean, here we are. We're talking about praying. We're talking about voting. And we're talking about standing. And uh, right now in Virginia, we're doing all of it. We're doing all of it right now. So here we stand, getting ready to vote. And I'm so happy that we are praying because Virginians are coming to the polls, getting ready to make a decision. And of course, the polls have been open since September 17th, and that's an active moment for us. And what we're seeing across the Commonwealth is something amazing. What we're seeing is Virginians coming together. It's not Republicans against Democrats. It's Virginians standing up standing up and saying no, that the left liberal progressive agenda that is dragging Virginia someplace where we don't recognize her, trying to turn her into California East, <laughs> Virginians are saying no, no. It is so encouraging. Now at the heart of this race are issues that all Virginians share his values. And at the top of the list right now is our children and our schools and the roles of parents in the life of their children's education. And what's been most shocking is that my opponent clarified what Virginians have all suspected. He clarified last week that he doesn't think that parents should be telling schools what should be taught in schools. We all suspected this because parents have been standing up for the rights of their children for a long time, but specifically standing up over the course of the last 20 months when parents stood up at school boarding meetings and said, open our schools. I want my child back in school five days a week. Please stop t teaching my children what to think and teach them how to think. Please tell us when there's materials in the curriculum that we won't agree with. Of course, Terry McAuliffe vetoed that bill. Parents are exercising the absolute legal right that they have in Virginia to play 
a primary role in their child's education. And let's just be clear, and I'm going to read this so you don't get confused. There is absolutely law in Virginia that says a parent has a fundamental right to make decisions concerning the upbringing, education, and care of the parent's child. That's Virginia law. So here we stand with a decision in front of us as Virginians. And as I drive around this great commonwealth, and let me tell you, we've covered a lot of ground over the course of the last nine months. You know, it's 25,000 miles around the globe, and I think we're about four times around now. And what I hear over and over and over again from families is I want a great education for my child, and I want to be deeply engaged in it. I was at a high school football game right around the corner at Loudoun County High School last Friday night. Parents were basically streaming out of the stands, Glenn, please go to work for our children, go to work for our schools. Teachers were streaming up saying, please, please help us. We want to teach children how to think, not what to think. This is representative of all of Virginia. And why we have so much momentum in this election right now. And so as Virginians go to the polls, there's such a clear distinction between the choices of Terry McAuliffe and Glenn Youngkin. Because it's not just Glenn Youngkin on the ballot. Yes, it's Winsome Sears, our, our lieutenant governor candidate, and Jason Miares. <laughs> and Jason Mihar is our attorney general candidate. Thank you. And House of Delegate candidates all over Virginia, and, and yes, sheriff races, and, and city council races, and supervisory board races, and yes, school board races all over Virginia. By the way, have we noticed school boards matter? They matter. What's on the ballot is not an individual ca candidate, but absolutely the future of the Commonwealth of Virginia. That's what's on the ballot. And America's watching. America's watching with a bright light because what is happening right now in Virginia with parents standing up for the rights of their children is happening all over America. And America needs Virginians to vote for them too. Americans need Virginians to vote for them too. And so as they go to the ballot and they see very clear differences, Virginians are going to have to choose. We put out our day one plan so everybody will know what's going to happen on day one. We, in fact, are going to reduce the cost of living in Virginia by cutting taxes because it's too expensive to live here, including eliminating the grocery tax. We are going to reestablish safe communities. Virginia is at a 20-year high in murder rate. We're going to comprehensively fund law enforcement. We're going to invest in our mental health industry. We are going to get Virginia safe again. We're going to reinvigorate our economy, which has stalled out over the last eight years. We're going to protect our right-to-work status, but we are going to get Virginia growing creating 400,000 jobs, fostering 10,000 startups, and making Virginia what we know she should be is number one in business as opposed to just being called that. We are going to reinvigorate Virginia's economy. Finally, we are going to go to work to reestablish excellence in education. And let me spend a few minutes on this. Over the course of the last eight years, the expectations in our schools have been watered down, been watered down consistently and systematically. When Terry McAuliffe was governor, 88 schools failed to reach their accreditation. And rather than do the hard work, they just changed the standards so not one would fail. Today, in Virginia, we rank 50th, 50th in the nation in the standards for our children to progress in reading and math. 50th. Is it any surprise that our children continue to do worse and worse? George W. Bush called it the soft bigotry of low expectations. 
This is the civil rights issue of our generation. The test scores demonstrate this leave every child behind education philosophy of Terry McAuliffe and Ralph Northam in, in just technicolor. This past spring, the test scores came out. 55% of white children in Virginia cannot pass an eighth grade math equivalency test. 70% of Latino children and over 80% of black children. The gap is wholly unacceptable. The magnitude of the number is shocking, shocking. We fast forward what was bad going into the pandemic got worse during the pandemic. Prior to the pandemic, two out of three black and Latino children passed their SOLs. The most recent test scores during the pandemic, two out of three black and Latino children failed their SOLs. Folks, this is just wholly unacceptable. And so we're going to work on day one. The first thing we're going to do on day one is make it absolutely clear that Virginia schools will not be closed ever again. We will have five day a week in-person education. Five days a week. Thank you. Second, we are absolutely going to reestablish high expectations and standards in schools, and then we're going to fund into our school system what will be the largest education budget in the history of Virginia. We're going to raise teacher salaries, we're going to fund into facilities, and we are going to increase investment in special education. We are going to invest in our education. But then we're going to turn around and hold the schools to high expectations. Set high expectations, fund in resources, and then hold them accountable. This is leadership. But we're also going to press forward with the most aggressive charter school program in Virginia's history, in our history. The reality is Virginia is so far behind in offering choice within the public school system. We have eight charter schools in the entire Commonwealth of Virginia. Eight. Maryland has 140. North Carolina has 190. We have eight. So on day one, we're going to launch 20 innovation charter schools. 20. It's just a down payment to close the gap over four years. These are schools that we will develop the curriculum in partnership with some of our leading universities. And we've already started discussions with Hampton University. And I met with leadership at Virginia State and Virginia Union to prepare a curriculum so that our children will be ready for college, but we're also going to partner with businesses to, to, to prepare a curriculum that will prepare children for life. Because not every child in Virginia wants to go to college right away. We're going to get our kids ready to either be college ready or career ready. But it all starts, it all starts with curriculum. And we know, in fact, the reason why we know is I went to find out when did we start seeing critical race theory in our schools? When did we first see it? And what we found was back in 2015 is the first evidence we find of a State Board of Education training program where slide decks were used to, that say we're teaching critical race theory in the classroom. That was in 2015 during Terry McAuliffe's administration. Fast forward. Go to the State Board of Education website. You'll find a book on the recommended reading list that's teaching critical race theory in the classroom. To suggest it's not there is patently false. What's wrong with critical race theory is that it teaches our children to view everything through a lens of race and then to divide each other into buckets and to tell one group that their dreams won't be realized because they're victims, and another group their dreams won't be realized because they're privileged. It's dream stealing. And it's directly counter to everything that we know is right. And I mean, Dr. Martin Luther King implored us to, to find our better selves when he said we must judge one another based on the content of our character, not the color of our skin. So, 
Virginia schools will teach all history, all history, the good and the bad, the good and the bad. We have, we have abhorrent chapters in our history, and we're going to teach them. But when I'm working for all of you as governor of Virginia, we will not have critical race theory in our schools. We will not. We will not. And finally, on day one, we're going to go to work to make government work for us as opposed to telling us what to do all the time. Government is of the people, for the people, by the people. And so on that day, on that first day, when we have the amazing privilege, Jason Miares, Winsome Sears and I get to stand in Mr. Jefferson's portico, we get to put our hand on a holy Bible, we get to swear that we will uphold the Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. We get to form a covenant with you to stand up for your rights, to go to work for you. And then we get to walk down those stairs, and I'm going to invite my wife Suzanne and Jason's wife Paige and Winsome's husband Terrence and we're going to invite everybody else who wants to join us physically or virtually, and we're going to stop and have a moment of prayer. And we're going to thank the Lord for His protection, for His guidance, for truly delivering a moment where we can go work for all Virginians. And then we're going to ask for His strength as we press forward his help, just like I start out every morning. Every morning I start out with Psalm 121. I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? The help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. And then I start asking for help. And that's the way we're going to start every day over the next four years. And I invite you all to join me, all of you. So we have a moment as Virginians to decide where are we going to be? What kind of Virginia will we become? And Virginians do not follow. We lead. Here's our moment to lead, not just on behalf of the Commonwealth of Virginia, but also on behalf of America. I mean, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Thomas Jefferson wrote our Declaration of Independence, and George Washington led us to independence, and James Madison framed our Constitution. It's been the envy of the world for nearly 250 years. And Patrick Henry stood up and he said, we will not ratify that Constitution without a Bill of Rights. Here, use Virginia's. It was written by George Mason. Virginians have been leading from the very beginning, and here's our chance again. And I ask all of you, lock arms with me. This is not about me. This is about you. This is about your children. This is about your grandchildren. This is about your nieces and your nephews. This is about Virginia's future, which they will, in fact, become. Join us. Hire me to go work for you. And let's together make Virginia, let's together, together make Virginia the best place in America to live and work and raise a family. God bless you all. Thank you.